Hartford, January 1876. My dear Howells, Thanks and ever so many for the good opinion of Tom Sawyer. Williams has made about 300 rattling pictures for it, some of them very dainty. Poor devil, what a genius he has and how he does murder it with rum. He takes a book of mine and without suggestion from anybody, builds no end of pictures just from his reading of it. There was never a man in the world so grateful to another as I was to you day before yesterday, when I sat down, in still rather wretched health, to set myself to the dreary and hateful task of making final revision of Tom Sawyer, and discovered upon opening the package of manuscript that your pencil marks were scattered all along. This was splendid, and swept away all labor. Instead of reading the manuscript, I simply hunted out the pencil marks and made the emendations which they suggested. I reduced the boy battle to a curt paragraph. I finally concluded to cut the Sunday school speech down to the first two sentences, leaving no suggestion of satire, since the book is to be for boys and girls. I tamed the various obscenities until I judged that they no longer carried offense. So, at a single sitting, I began and finished a revision which I had supposed would occupy three or four days and leave me mentally and physically fagged out at the end. I was careful not to inflict the manuscript upon you until I had thoroughly and painstakingly revised it. Therefore, the only faults left were those that would discover themselves to others, not me. And these you had pointed out. There was one expression which perhaps you overlooked. When Huck is complaining to Tom of the rigorous system in vogue at the widow's, he says the servants harass him with all manner of compulsory decencies, and he winds up by saying, and they call me all to hell. No exclamation point. Long ago, when I read that to Mrs. Clemens, she made no comment. Another time, I created occasion to read that chapter to her aunt and her mother, both sensitive and loyal subjects of the kingdom of heaven, so to speak, and they let it pass. I was glad, for it was the most natural remark in the world for that boy to make and he had been allowed few privileges of speech in the book. When I saw that you too had let it go without protest, I was glad, and afraid too. Afraid you hadn't observed it, did you? And did you question the propriety of it? Since the book is now professedly and confessedly a boys and girls book, that darn word bothers me some nights, but it never did until I had ceased to regard the volume as being for adults. Don't bother to answer now, for you're, you've written enough to do without allowing me to add to that burden. But tell me when you see me again. Which we do hope will be next Saturday or Sunday or Monday. Couldn't you come now and mull over the alterations which you are going to make in your manuscript and make them after you go back? Wouldn't it assist the work if you dropped out of harness and routine for a day or two and have that sort of revivification which comes of a holiday forgetfulness of the workshop? I can always work after I've been to your house, and if you will come to mine now and hear the club toot their various horns over the exasperating metaphysical question which I mean to lay before them in the disguise of a literary extravaganza, it would just brace you up like a cordial. I feel sort of mean trying to persuade a man to put down a critical piece of work at a critical time, but yet I am honest in thinking it would not hurt the work nor impair your interest in it to come under the circumstances. Mrs. Clemens says, 
Maybe the houses could come Monday if they cannot come Saturday. Ask them. It is worth trying. Well, how's that? Could you? It would be splendid if you could. Drop me a postal card. I should have a twinge of conscience if I forced you to write a letter. I'm honest about that. And if you find you can't make out to come... Tell me that you bodies will come the next Saturday, if the thing is possible, and stay over Sunday. Yours ever, Mark.